So like the two years, 2015, 2016 in Atlanta mm-hmm. will be the most like influential years of my life. Okay. Why? And that is from like Dan Quinn, who was our head coach, like what he brought mm-hmm. of like, just like the belief in people and team and environment and having fun doing it. Like it is a well of influence that like, I keep drawing from in my own professional life now. Like that is the time I go back to. So like, like when I'm creating my style of like how I want to coach and connect with these kids, <clears throat> like it is a direct reflection of like those two years spent under Dan and his staff. Uh-huh. So those are my two favorite years of football. <clears throat> it's hard to compare anything to it. Yeah. And, and it stems from him. Like it's just a belief in people, you know, like he is a people person first made you want to be there. Like I would like, I would jump off a bridge for the guy, you know, mm-hmm. and I can't say that about a lot of people. And I think that's why we were really good. And that's why, I mean, that's why he has success everywhere he goes, you know, Seattle. Now he's Dallas's defensive coordinator. Yeah. Like he is just that kind of guy. And that is the environment he brings. So Detroit was totally different. You know, it was mm-hmm. like, a, show up, you better do your job. Right. Cause you're getting paid to do it. And that's yeah. how it's just typical. That's not, you know, but that's it's not just, usual. No, no, that's just what it is, you know, where, yeah. It felt different in Atlanta, you know, and that was one of the worst parts about losing the Super Bowl. Like I can deal with it. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I get it. Like I got to play in the Super Bowl. I lost. Yeah. Like if you give me a ring, it's just, it'll sit in a drawer forever. And right. I might give it to my dad and, you know, it'll be a cool story at cookouts, but yeah, like, like I did, I do have, have like a lot of pain of like, Dan didn't get a, Dan Quinn didn't get a Dan win. Quinn didn't get a win. Arthur Blank, who to me is like one of the best owners in sports, mm-hmm. like tremendous individual. He didn't get a ring. The city didn't get a ring, you know, a ring. Like, sure. That was like the true environment. Like it was very like selfless. Like it was really about the people around you and you spend every day with, which mm-hmm. once you start jumping teams, like you don't get that. You don't get that anymore. Sure. No. No. And it probably stemmed because I was there for four years, which not everybody yeah. gets to spend Most a lot of time. Of yeah. yeah, you bounce around a lot, unless you're yeah. you know, like a dude. Yeah. But, so, like, those two years, like, none of my other years were compared to those. Yeah. You know, okay. In terms of just what I took from it. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah, I mean, sure. do, you, do you remember anything specific about Dan Quinn where it's, like, the story, like, where he just kind of walk in to, like, a linebacker room and you're sitting there just, like, alone? He comes in and sits next to you just starts chatting away or, like, so there is, I have one memory. Okay. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing for myself, but yeah. <laughs> like, so he comes down, like, this is the type of staff that, <clears throat> like, they would just come and sit down with players. Something I wasn't used to for like lunch, you know, they'd get their food and they just sit down next to you. Like, yeah, I guess how it should be. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm sitting next to Dan and he's like, <clears throat> the one of the, one of the chefs walked by and he's been there for like two, three years. You know, I don't. I just always called the guy, you know, hey man, chef, like, you know, what everyone else called him. Like, right. I might have learned his name once or twice. And it's just, you know, there's so many people. And right. right. He gets me, he's like, what's his name? And I'm oh like, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't know. I remember him, I remember Dan just looking at me, he's like, that's effed up. He's like, that ain't right. And like, got up and like went and asked the dude his name and like introduced. It was like very early on of him being there. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's just Dan, right? Like he's about people first and yeah. like yeah. the culture, like that is super important to him. And I remember, and I'm like, wow, that's, I think back, I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, you know, that is probably something that I should do. Right. Like it's important to him. It better be important to me you know, right. as a player there. Right. And yeah. I remember like the pit in my stomach. I'm just like, Oh, I don't know his name. <laughs> like, yeah. No, no. Did, did coach Quinn come back and sit next to you or did he, did he walk away? <laughs> I think it was done. Who knows? <laughs> I don't really remember much after that. You know, I was just okay. so embarrassed and because I've been there and I was a captain the year before. Like, yeah, you know, something I should have known. Okay. No. Okay, but that's actually that's that's funny. Like, like Dustin, I've talked about that before. Where, you know, I you you knowing experience. someone's name, who like like a chef or like whenever I've been at institutions, I've made I made just damn sure to know the janitor's name. Yeah, absolutely. They damn sure knows I, something about that person, yeah. like their kids in the, in a baseball league, or you know, I I know they like like cannolis. Well, today's National Cannoli Day. Like something mm-hmm. about that goes so so far. And that, that now you're saying that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. How he's had so much success, especially coming from from Seattle, where it seems from the outside looking in. I've never been to Seattle. I don't I don't know this, but it seems like especially when he was there, it was a very tight knit. Yeah 
very family like that's yeah. the way i can describe it like that's well, yeah i mean yeah. it's a powerful thing to create culture like that i mean uh i mean that's why i think that's why it it, it stinks so much when you're building a culture and an environment and an energy like that and then you're not you know you're not as successful as you absolutely should be because you know it feels in your heart like man this is exactly how it should be done like there's no reason why we shouldn't be absolutely the best at everything and i mean the scoreboard at the end of the day isn't the measuring stick of yeah. of a program in that by any means but um yeah i mean if you if everyone i mean it, it's not even i think you can extrapolate what's going on there in those environments and if you apply that to real life life you know if you're treating the highest paid dude on your team and you're treating the chef with the same courtesies i mean look at what happens you know i mean yeah. look at the buy-in that you get from people look at the respect that you instantly get you know yeah. i mean you don't have to spend a bunch of time trying to figure someone out when they do a few things that like oh, okay i see how this guy operates and you get so much you know buy-in you know buy-in from someone's heart really quickly it's 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 incredible to be a part of something like that i could see where you're drawing uh so much from from those experiences for sure yeah yeah so your, your, your time in Detroit, do you remember which head coach was there at the time? Was it, no, they've gone through quite a few, so. Mm. It was uh, Dave Caldwell. That was Caldwell. That was Caldwell. Caldwell yeah. Okay. Was, yeah, Coach Caldwell. He was the, okay. he was the head coach. And then uh, Terrell Austin was the D coordinator. Okay. okay. <clears throat> do, you, do you remember what defense they ran? Uh, it was still a 4-3, totally mm -hmm. different, you know, scheme-wise, like mm -hmm. – a lot of like a multitude of coverages i mean you had yeah like everything like a lot of show the quarterback a bunch of different looks uh pre-snap post-snap what you would do mm -hmm. so we're like yeah in atlanta it was like hey this is what we run we're really freaking good at it we know what we're gonna get to try and beat it so yeah. you know it was more about like your gameplay and your attitude and your run and hit that you would bring to the field less about like you know alignment you know disguise and stuff 